Hey everybody, welcome back. And today we'll be doing a little more DIY. We'll be doing a crossover upgrade on a vintage 1995-ish Technics SB LX30s. So let's start off by seeing what's inside. We have an eight inch poly cone woofer and a two inch treated paper cone tweeter. Let's get these unmounted. We'll take note that red and green wires are coming to the woofers. The positive is a red, the negative is a green. The positive has the larger of the two speeds. Fairly light magnet, but in this box, you actually get a pretty full sound. We just won't want to push this guy over past about 90 dB, but in 75 to 85 dB, it should sound pretty good. The cabinet is made out of half inch particle board. We'll take note that the tweeter has black and yellow wires, the yellow going to the plus. And this tweeter is eight ohms, the same as the woofer. Looking inside, I can see that the crossover is mounted to the back cup. So we'll go ahead and remove the back cup. The back cup uses spring connectors. So I'm gonna replace those with something that can handle banana plugs. We have a little PCB board mounted on the back of the binding cup and that has two components. It looks like we have a capacitor and it looks like this is a 2.7 microfarad capacitor. And next to that, we have a little poly fuse and that's gonna protect the tweeter from a surge. I don't think it's necessary now that amps are a lot better. So I'm not gonna worry about that poly fuse. So we have a first order crossover on the tweeter and once again, nothing on the woofer. The woofer is playing full range and we gotta fix that. I'll go ahead and remove this crossover board. I'm gonna clip the plus and minus to the base here and put the terminal cup back on. Now we'll set up an amp and send these over a signal so you can see what they sound like before any upgrades. On this side, I have my Doak H7 Pro hooked up to the iPad and we'll be sending over a signal to the speaker. Over here, we have our negative and our positive. And again, this is gonna be both speakers hooked up with the crossover on the tweeter only, nothing on the woofer. Let's see what this sounds like. That was the sound of the tweeter and the woofer together. So I'll go ahead and clip the crossover now and we'll play the tweeter only with the built-in network. So that was a tweeter only. Now we'll switch over and play the woofer only, which will be these two full range. So that's currently as is. I've already designed a crossover. Now, once again, this is not a tutorial on crossover design. This is just showing you the DIY upgrade once you have a crossover design. 
Down below, I'll link a great resource for courses on crossover design over on Udemy. First, we'll start off with our inductor. This is a 1.5 millihenry inductor, 18 gauge by Dayton Audio. This is gonna act as our low pass filter and block some of those high frequencies. We'll put this in series with our plus. And here's what we get now. Now that's our first order crossover, which means that this is gonna give us a fall off of six decibels per octave. If we wanna get out of that highs even sooner, what we're gonna do is make this a second order crossover. We're gonna add a capacitor parallel to the negative line. And what this is gonna do is gonna pull some of those higher frequencies out even faster. So instead of a six dB roll off, we're gonna get a 12 dB roll off. We're gonna pull out those high frequencies quicker. And here's what this sounds like. So that's the sound that I want for my lows. I don't want any of the high frequencies coming out of this driver interfering with the high frequencies from the tweeter. And I don't want the woofer to go so high that it goes into its breakup frequencies where we start getting the distortion. We wanna keep it fairly low. In this case, I can't go too low because that tweeter can go very low itself. I'm gonna bring this tweeter down to around three kilohertz and this woofer up to about that. I'd love to have this around 800 hertz, but that tweeter just can't go that low. But even with removing anything over three kilohertz on the woofer, it's still a big improvement. So let's see what we can do with the tweeter. And here, we're gonna start with our capacitor. And this is gonna be our high pass filter. And I'm using a Janssen standard cap here. On the woofer network, I also use a Janssen cap, but I use their more basic cross cap. As this one's not going to the signal path, it is just shooting the signal out to ground. On the tweeter, since we are having that signal cross through, I'm using a higher quality capacitor. Not super high end, but nice. Both of these much better than the literalytic capacitors. So we'll start with this capacitor on the plus. So the same thing here, you can hear that we have those highs right there. Now this value here is a little bit higher than the value on the built-in crossover, the 2.7. This is a 3.9, so we're actually crossing a little bit lower, but we're also not adding those additional high frequencies that the woofer was adding on before and summing that signal to give you a higher peak, as well as some troughs in where you get the comb filtering effect. And because this is the first order, we have that 6 dB roll off we're gonna make the tweeter circuit a second order as well by adding an inductor. And we'll be adding a 0.5 millihenry inductor, 18 gauge again, this is the Dayton. And the same thing, we'll be shunting it over to ground. Of course, once we mount these onto a crossover board, they'll be much more stable. This is just for testing. And let's see what this sounds like.
And the last component here is a resistor. This network calls for a two ohm, 10 watt resistor after the plus to attenuate our highs slightly, but that'll do by ear. So let's start by soldering the networks. All right, so we're at our work area over here. I have a 12 by 12 sheet of uh, plywood, just eighth inch. Now we'll figure where we want holes drilled. We'll take some of the sharp corners off. All right, we'll start with our large inductor. And we want that big part of the zip tie to be under. That way it gives us a little support. So once I make this tight enough, I can clip off what I don't need and then we'll solder. So there we go. We have our plus that comes in here. Our signal will get split from the lows over here. The highs come through to our tweeter. And this is our second order Linquist Riley filter. So now we have both crossovers done. This is lead free solder, but I still don't like to get any of the flux on me. So I just use some gloves for that. We're ready to solder everything. But first we're gonna add the speaker wire to the crossovers. We'll clean it off. I also pulled out these little spring tabs. Although they're pretty nice, they're like pretty heavy duty. They're pretty strong. But I decided to switch it to these guys as well. I got these from Parts Express, they're around $6 each. And they're solid brass, except for they did have a steel nut here but I replaced these with brass nuts as well. I took a file and I filed down the edge of this particle board and this has a nice little gasket, so it'll seal really nice. So then I can bring that down and screw it down as well. So that'll be a, a much nicer connection. So this is a completed crossover. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this into the cabinet and then I will solder these onto the plate here. All right guys, so we're all done with the DIY and I've listened to the speakers, it's a pretty nice improvement. I did change that two ohm resistor on the tweeter to a one ohm and I think it gave me a little more balanced sound. Here are some basic frequency response measurements of the tweeter up on top and of the woofer at the bottom. And these were shot independently and this is the frequency response with both tweeter and woofer and this is the original crossover. Now on the bottom here, we have our new crossover. You can see we got a little bit flatter and we removed some of that little dip right there. Now this doesn't really tell you exactly how the speaker sounds. This is only giving you a one tone sweep across 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. What we're seeing here is the output level or how balanced that is across those frequencies. We don't want any specific frequency to be quite a bit higher or lower than the others. We're looking for flat here. Now when we're speaking about the sound of the speaker, we're not talking about flat here. We're talking about how dimensional the music sounds when played in stereo. This is just one basic measurement. This doesn't show us any distortion when the woofer is playing too many frequencies or higher than its intended range or when the tweeter is playing too low out of its range. But generally speaking, this is an improvement across the frequency band. As for how it sounds, we're cleaning up that vocal range. The vocals seem quite a bit more crisp and that's mostly because we're not making that woofer hit those higher frequencies. That one ohm resistor on the tweeter circuit also tamed it down just a touch. Now you really don't wanna be throwing a bunch of parts at a crossover because a crossover doesn't only affect the frequency response but also the phase and impedance. With this crossover, we're making the impedance drop just a touch to about seven ohms and I'm cool with it as long as we're above six. Once you start dipping under six, five, some class D chip amps have a difficult time with that and you could get some clipping, but I think we're pretty safe at seven. All right guys, so now I have some sound demos and you'll be hearing the speaker with the original crossover and with the upgraded crossover. And remember, this is just for fun. This isn't to make these super accurate. If you want them super accurate, send these over to Danny over at GR Research and he'll do a much better job than I. I was just trying to pull the harshness out and get a little more clarity out of them. The bass response doesn't get any stronger, but it does get cleaner. 
And I want to apologize for the casual look. It's 85 degrees here in California. It's a beautiful day. So I'm in a t-shirt and shorts all day. All right, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Here are the sound demos. Tan fácil que es enamorarme Y tan difícil olvidarte Porque la vida me juraste Y hoy te busco y tú no estás Aunque me duela ver tu foto Eterno mi corazón roto Por si mañana te vuelvo a encontrar Ya no sé disimular Ya voy no Tan fácil que es enamorarme Y tan difícil olvidarte Porque la vida me juraste Y hoy te busco y tú no estás Aunque me duela ver tu foto Eterno mi corazón roto Por si mañana te vuelvo a encontrar Ya no sé disimular Ya voy no Ya no sé disimular, ya voy no te puedo hablar. Ya no sé disimular, ya voy no te puedo hablar. Ya no sé disimular.